Let me check out the 2021 uh, LTV Wonder. This is the U, I'm sorry, W24MB. So this has the Murphy bed in it. This unit does not have a full uh, slide out in this one, so you don't have to worry about any seals or any extra components or driving away with it open, which I've seen happen. So this is on the Ford Transit chassis. Uh, we have our lighted entries at the top, which is a nice feature. So when you open the doors, these little lights will come on. Uh, we have our nice aluminum rims from the front to the rear. Uh, we have a dual act dual dualies on the rear axle, which helps with our uh, load. We have our main entry door and our awning. Now our awning uh, switch is actually located in the passenger door. It's going to be on our wall, kind of like right in this area right here. We have it in and out. So with this model, you can have the box to extend or retract. This one does not have a motion sensor on it, so you do have to be pretty mindful of the wind in the area. You do have LED lights all the way across the edge, as well as a light underneath to give you good lighting during the night. Um, it's kind of hard to show you on this one here, but you have your legs tucked up in here. So I'm going to have our graphics lady attach the design for this uh, part here. So it's going to be on a little bit of a different model, but it's the same concept for the unit. Now, on this side here, we have our entry door. Um, I'm just going to close this awning up real quick, so we're back. All right, now I'm back, back in my normal clothes. Uh, have the awning all the way retracted. Our uh, entry door here does have an electronic step. Right now, it's covered, as this unit's pretty much brand new. Uh, and every, everything's going to be slightly dirty or uh, have coverings on it. So when you get it, it's going to be all nice and clean. And uh, you may see a little bit of difference because some stuff is removed as far as the cover for the step so that grip tape doesn't get all messed up for you. So it has grip tape on the step, helps you with traction getting out and in. Uh, above the entry door, which I'll show you when we go inside, there's a switch to keep the step out. So when you open and close it, you don't have this step retracting. Um, but when you have the ignition on, this will auto retract. So you don't have to worry about this hitting a pole while going down the road. So rule of thumb, when you're traveling, look before you step, make sure that this step is all the way out so you don't have a big leap outside of the unit. We do have the nice lighted uh, grab bar handles here so you can find them in the dark easily. We have the dual pane windows which are open, which you can open, allowing air into the unit, but also with the, the style of window, you're able to keep them open when it's in light rain because it deflects the rain when it's coming down. Underneath here, by the entry door, uh, on this unit, you're gonna notice these locks. These are your twist style locks. So you twist them to the right to lock them. So when you lock them to the right, that locks them closed. Now you're gonna find that you have a key that kind of looks like an egg. Push the button, lets the key come out. That key is gonna be inserted. When you turn it to the right and remove, that's going to lock your latch. You go the opposite way to unlock. And then you can spin to the left to unlock the latch and lift up. These do have your nice uh, gas shocks to hold them open. So this one here is a storage compartment. Um, I'd suggest things that you don't want to ever get wet. Even though this has a great seal, sometimes you can have condensation between temperature differences, meaning Let's say it's raining outside and you have the cold, it's been a hot day, and then you have the cold rain hitting the bottom of this here. It is insulated and should prevent that, but the rule of thumb, it's really never going to really stop it completely unless it's inside in a heated environment. So I'll suggest putting things out in the outside compartments that you don't want to get ruined, wet, or damaged if you forget about them in there. Um, but the seals help prevent it. Now, further down in this compartment here, this is our electrical compartment. This houses our uh, inverter, which is this big gray box here. And we have our and 
This is our two AGM batteries, so this one give you better power than most of the campers out in the market. Um, as far as that goes, so we have one and two. These are uh, in parallel, so it's going to give you more amperage instead of voltage. So you got your battery back here. Now above me here, we have a 120 outlet that's only going to be operational when you're plugged in to shore or running the generator. We have these two little bars here. This is going to be for your outside table, and that's stored in this compartment right here. So this is our outside compartment. Yeah, outside table in that compartment. So we open it up. We have two locking tabs at the base. Push it and bring them down. And we can lift this up. Put them on like so. And push this up. To lock them in place so they don't come out. Or when you bump them, it doesn't fall off. Now, these legs are adjustable. They have little uh, locks on the sides. So if you need to, you can bring them down to level them off. Like so, now you have a pretty level table there. And then you just reverse the process when you're done. We have our fridge fence right here, our intake and our exhaust for a fridge. Behind me here, this is that compartment. And here are your uh, foot pegs that in that attached video that I gave you. That's where these locations are. You have one in front of the door, one in front of this door here. So in your compartment, this is where your table gets locked to. So I'll show you that in a short here. <laughs> Just like that, we have our table in. Give her a little tug. And you can tuck this up. Now you do have some more storage on the right hand side, some shelving. Also in the corner, we have our ladder extension. So it's a little bit of a work to get it out. First, bring the top lift up. Pull it over and bring it down, and then you can lift it out sideways. Uh, this light in here is controlled by a switch in the interior, which will go over. Now I got this out. I'm just going to put this behind us for a minute. In the compartment below us, this is our generator. So this is a quiet gas generator. So this is going to run on regular gas from our fuel tank. So you must have over a quarter tank of gas inside the unit for this generator generator to operate. Uh, if you go under a quarter tank, this generator will stop operation, allowing you to leave the area to go be able to get more gas. So you're never stranded on the road or where you're dry camping. Now you have two tabs here. You can lift these upwards. That releases the front here. That gains access to the inside here. We have our air filter. We have our start stop, so if for whatever reason the interior switch stops operation, you start able to start it. Now I just shut that off because I'm not going to compete with it. Um, we have our breaker is on the right hand side of it on the inside. 
and it has like a little arrow showing you where it's at. Uh, towards the outside is on. If it's inward, it has tripped and it is off, so you must reset it. This little yellow piece here is where our dipstick is for our oil capacity, so we can check our oil and check the level of that. Um, our engine, this is the uh, PC board for it. That's what controls everything inside of that. So to put this back in, you'll notice you have these little lip here that sits on this area here. Push it back up and then pull these tabs down. That locks it in place. Now all the way in the back of the unit, we have our steps to move the top. So you can see this is pretty high. Uh, if you're strong enough, you probably can climb up yourself with using your arm strength until you can get your foot up here. But if you don't look for the adventure, the install is you're going to put this horizontal over the top and down. Now myself, I'm about 240 pounds and this holds me just fine. So you don't have to worry about it bringing you down. Now I'm going to ask my camera lady that any camera if you don't mind. So we have these two lines here. You don't want to step over top of those lines. We have our solar panels all the way up top. That's 400 watts of solar, 100 watts a piece. Now to clean those, just use some regular mild soap and water and clean them off. That gives you your most power consumption up top. We have our wine guard antenna, our Dometic air conditioner and our fantastic van and our dome for our shower. All the way up top there, that's going to be our uh, front vent. And the little thing is our antenna for our vehicle. All right, so on the back here, we have our hitch. We have our exhaust for our generator. So make sure that you're not backing up to someone's house or window and running your generator so you don't have them get carbon dioxide poisoning. All the way at the top here, we have our backup camera. Now that's from Ford. So if any issues happen with that, we're going to have to go through Ford for that. That's all in the back here. Now on the driver's side back, we have our water compartment. Our water compartment has all of our connections for our hoses, our cable, our satellite, our macerator pump switch, our macerator hose, our gray and black valve. We also have winterization uh, bypass inside there. And we can also power fill our fresh water. So we'll go over that in a few moments. I'm just going to talk about all this and then we're going to come back to the water closet as that's a mouthful to go over. Above our water closet, we have our Truma water heater. So first things first, when you get to the site, you're going to want to bring this down. Right now we don't have our water filter inside, so you have to bring this down. Put your water filter inside here, which I'll show you what the filter lights looks like in the interior. Once you put it in, push it until it latches. You don't need to hit it or anything like that, just push it on. We have our power, so you have on up or on down, doesn't matter. On is on. As long as you have 12 volts, you see a little green light illuminate. Right now, I don't have any water in this as it's winterized currently. Um, once you put the filter in, fill it with water. Uh, that's going to stay green, but I'm going to turn it off only because it will turn red on me and give me a fault showing that there's no water flow going through the unit. Below that, we have our furnace. So you want to make sure that you put this back up before turning on your furnace, as you can kind of melt this door from the furnace exhaust, which is right here. And we also have the intake as well. Farther back, we have our short cord connection. Now, when we are plugging in to 110, we have our short cord. Our short cord end has a lock on the end of it. We have a very, we have an L. So you want to match these two ends up onto our short cord connection. Turn it to the right after you pushed it in slightly. And we're going to lock, lock it on there. So <coughs> if someone tripped on it, it doesn't pull out. Now on the end of it, It has a three prong connector. You can get the adapter from 30 amp to 15 amp. The only thing you cannot do is run your AC or microwave if you're plugged into to like your house 
style plug, but this style you can do run the AC and the microwave as much as you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. On the very top, there's a blue light and there's a red light. A red light shows that there's uh, an error in the wiring, wherever you've plugged in. Blue light means that you're getting 120 power to it. Now I'm going to plug this in and you'll notice on the cap that this here is either going to turn blue or green, indicating that we're getting 120 into the unit. This model, and then you just want to leave the cap down like so, so water can run off of it. Uh, underneath that shutter board, we have our propane. So in our propane here, we have our gauge, which you can see on here how full it is. Also, that it, oh, sorry, stumbling over myself. You can see that this has wires coming out of it. Those wires go to the inside. So you're able to check the level of your tank from the inside of the unit. So this here is your off on. So you turn it to the right to close it, turn it to the left to open it. Above this valve, you have a yellow cap. This cap is where you fill. And then you have your bleeder right here. You want to make sure that's closed all the way um, as that just allows gas to escape if it's open. And you don't want that because you have a nice explosion. Now, on your unit, this is the only compartment that does not have a lock as you need to have access to your propane tank in the event of an emergency. Next to it, you have your sewer hose compartment. So this is where you can store your sewer hose. So this currently has a max radiator on it, so you're not really going to need this unless you run into an emergency where you need to use gravity dump. So you have to remove the max radiator from the unit, put that hose on, Put it in the dump station and then just pull your valves and that will grab you. Dump it. But this unit is equipped with a macerator. So it will uh, chop it up while it's putting it into the dump station. Then we have another large compartment. We have our factory uh, carpet mats in there. So we, they don't get messed up when we have large uh, transit people moving our units around our lot. And this is our largest compartment in this unit, which has two locks. And then we have our entry door to our coach. Uh, let's go back to our water closet and we'll check that out. All right, so down here, this is our water closet. We have a macerator, this is the pump right here. That will catch this hose. This hose is retractable and extends, so you can reach it to your dump station. On the end of this, this does have a cap, so you can keep everything nice and sanitary inside your unit. So just remove that cap. Now the reason this has different size hook holes is so in uh, dump stations, they can be different size pipes inside the unit. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in our grate. So if any winterization fluid comes out, we can just dump it in our grate. So to use the macerator, we are going to dump our black tank. So our black tank dump is located all the way at the rear of the unit, right here. And it's labeled as such. Kind of hard to see. So you just pull that. That allows the toilet water to come to the macerator. Once that's there, we're going to push the macerator button, which is. Probably in this cap. So, right here, this is our macerator switch. We're going to turn it on. You can see it's pushing out water. So, that's going to be all of the flow of water, which is any freeze currently. And you can see that it's retracting. Now that that's retracting, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Close that valve. Now, after that's done, to help keep this nice and sanitary, uh, you can take this off, which is a breather. This is for your san 
sand pump uh, flush. So we're going to open back up the black tank dump. We hook our garden hose to this from a faucet or a spigot to force water into our black tank. That's going to help clean out the black tank. Once that's uh, going, you're going to want to make sure you turn this back on like so. So it uh, helps push out all the water that you're putting into it. Uh, turn off your water source to here, remove the hose, put your plug back on this. Once that's done, you can go ahead and close the black valve again. Now that that's done, you're going to go ahead and pull on this great tank dump. That's going to be all the water from your shower and from your kitchen sink and from your bathroom sink. You do the same. And it looks like our gray tank was already uh, empty, so I'm going to go ahead and close that valve. You want to leave your valves closed. Now, there's a misconception that across some uh, trailer parks that you want to leave it open so when you go, it comes right out. That's not the case. These units have a holding tank in them, and they don't drain out right away. Uh, what helps keep them going is you want to use a lot of water inside those, so you can pre-dump some water in your toilet to help keep your solids floating and your paper from paper mache the bottom of your tank. If you just let it go, it's going to stack it up and become near impossible to get out without replacing the whole tank. And that's very costly to the consumer. So now that that's all done, we're going to take our cap. I'm going to lift up on the hose, allowing gravity to take out any excess that was in the hose to allow that to come out the end. Now that I've confirmed that all of it is out, I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on. I'm going to take this head, put this head all the way in first, and then follow it with the rest of the hose. Now inside here, there is a cap, so if you do have to take off the macerator after you're done dumping some gravity, you can put this on, and that stops any leakage coming through if it was to pass the uh, black valve or gray valve, preventing it from falling on the ground. Next to the Samcon flush, we have our cable hookup, so you can hook up our cable here, or if we have satellite, you can cover it up here, meaning like a satellite dish. Next to that, we have a water pump. This water pump works from the fresh tank, which holds fresh water, to pump it into our uh, city connections, which is our toilet, faucet, shower. Um, that's what that does. It turns it on by itself. Then next to that, we have our city fill. So this is the connection where you put your garden hose in to have water to your whole water system. And that's all of our valves throughout the unit. We have our garden hose here. This gets pushed into this quick net. So, that gives us flow to it. So we have cold and hot. So the hot's going to be from the water heater. Cold's just going to be from the source here. To remove it, make sure you heat press on this, releasing any water that's in it. Push back on the collar and remove. I suggest lifting up on the end of the hose, draining out any excess out of this. Now there is a single hose inside. This is for winterization only. Uh, if you put this blue valve from point to winterize, turn on the water pump and you'll have the water suck from this source here. Put it back to normal flow. That's going to take water from our fresh tank and put it to our city connections. Now to fill that fresh tank above this faucet here, there is a silver valve. If you take this and put it sideways, that's going to take water from here, from our city connection, and put it to our fresh tank. Then remember to put it, this valve up and down, 
that puts it back to normal slash uh, city water. So that means that this fitting here will give water to our city connections. And if we turn on the water pump, it's going to take water from our fresh tank to our city connections. If you don't do that and turn on the water pump, and you're like, why am I not getting any water? That's because it's just taking water out of the fresh tank, pushing it, and putting it back into the fresh tank. So I'm just making a, a circle. So all I got to do is make sure that this valve here is up and down. Uh, there is a pass through underneath this. So if you want to, you can actually put this back here. There is a pass through right here. So you can put your uh, hose and cable connection through there. So you're able to close this compartment so you're keeping water out of your unit and keeping it look nice and clean. We're going to go and check out the inside now and we're going to go over all the aspects of the interior. Alright, so over top of the entry door here, inside this compartment, we have our push latch here, or pull latch. We have our Bluetooth enabled solar power controller. So we have our AC, so you can kind of boost your AGMs by hitting AC. We have max boost, that's going to give you maximum solar charge to uh, help out the power of that unit. We have A and B, so that's just going to help us go through the whole uh, system. So if you hit B, you can see what the battery voltage is at. You can see how many amps you're getting input it from. Currently we're inside, so you have a little nighttime thing there showing that we're not getting any solar input to our batteries. And we can see that our battery's percentage is at 100%. And then back to 80 amp hours. Next to that, we have our Freedom X. Oh, sorry. One thing I forgot to say about this, this is Bluetooth uh, capable. Uh, all you have to do is go to putting Go Power for your unit. Download the Go Power app. Turn on your Bluetooth on your device. You find your device, and then you compare with it, and then you're able to see the same type of information that's going on with your whole unit on your phone. So if you're laying in bed, you can check out what's going on while you're laying in bed. You can disconnect if you have multiple devices, but you only have one device on this one. Next to that, you have your Freedom X controller. You can also see your battery voltage here. You can see that the battery type is ABS, so it's a AGS battery. Right now it says bypass because we're taking 120 volts uh, and charging our batteries through the inverter. If we unplug, you'll see just a battery to this little light bulb uh, showing that it is inverting 12 volt into 120 volts. If you hit the little Chevron up button here, that's going to show you how many amps we are pulling in. Right now we're charging at 10 amps. Uh, we can see that our AC input is two, two amps with a zero load because I'm not running a microwave or air conditioner. And then we can see we're getting 123 volts at 60 hertz. And then it's just a bunch of settings. And back to home. Next to that, we have our AquaGo. So this is where we control that water heater. Uh, if you push it up one, that's going to be just our standard water heater that's going to use the recirculation valve to keep our hot water hot at all times. And then we have Eco, which is going to use less propane while going down the road. Um, but it's not going to be hot when you first turn on the water heater. It's going to take a minute for that water to get warm, and then it will finally get hot after you've had that water source running for a little while. So like if you're trying to do dishes, uh, I'll say Eco would be your best to do your dishes. Now, if you go down from off, you have a lightning bolt with a, a snowflake. That's going to be our winterization uh, mode. So that's going to try to keep our water temperature above 40 degrees. If we have below freezing temperatures at night for a couple of hours, I would suggest putting that on there just so we can keep that water heater from freezing overnight. Below it is clean. Now, clean is a two-hour uh, sequence, which is going to make our water heater inoperable until it has gone through this whole system. Once it is blinking, that means that it's done. Remove your water heater, rinse it off, 
put it back in and you're going to need to run two, I think it's two, ten, two to 10 gallons, I believe. I forget how many gallons of water through that water heater to reset it until this light goes off. Once that's done, you're going to turn off your water heater, turn this back to off, and then just turn on the water heater outside, and then you can use this as normal. Now, at the bottom of the entry door, we have our battery disconnect. That's this little switch right here. Now, if I turn that off, it's going to all go turn everything off, like so. That kills all 12 volt power to our whole system. So when we turn back on, that's going to give us 12 volt to our house. This does not disconnect the battery from the chassis. To the right of me, we have our fire extinguisher and our uh, main control panel for our lights. Now this is just a, well, I'd say a switch panel. So as you can see right now, the lights are kind of dim overhead. So these are dimmable. You just got to keep on holding them and they'll glow pretty much dark and then get all bright again. And then it's a single push, turn them off and on. Uh, we have our assist handle and this exit baggage. This is going to be the single light that's in the back of the unit. Um, we have our awning light, which is also dimmable as well. So if you don't want so many bugs, you can dim that light. Same with the porch light. And then we have a master on and master off. So what the master lights do uh, is saves the settings. So like if you have your lights dimmed and you turn everything off, when you turn it back on, it's going to have the same settings that you previously pushed before pushing your master lights off. Now I was talking earlier in the video, the step override. So if we turn the step override on, that's going to keep this step outwards. Um, this step is activated by the main door. So if you close the door here, it won't pull your steps in. But if you close this door here, that would pull your steps in. Uh, this entry door also has is linked with the chassis. These are my keys. And here we go. Put them in my back pocket. So you can lock and unlock your entry door by a simple push. So I'm we'll shutting in and you'll hear the audible lock. Entry door. So when you're leaving, all you have to do is hit lock and that locks your door. Now it's not going to lock it when it's open, and that's because your contacts are right here at the base of the door. So if these are not touching, this door will not lock and unlock with it open. So you're wondering how to keep the privacy with this door. So if, when you close the door, you can see that there's no uh, blind on it. So you have a blind over the top. You pull that down, there's a little magnet on the base and you can magnetize it closed so it doesn't flap while you are moving around inside the unit. <laughs> then when you're done, it rolls back up. Next, we'll go over the electronic control board, which has all of our data and everything on the top of it. So we'll be right back while we set you up for that. All right. So the entry door is to our right side. And to the right side of when you're coming in the entry door, we have a little closet here that has your hooks for uh, jackets or shirts and some storage down below. Push that closed. On the wall over top of the passenger seat, we have our main control panel. Now, this main control panel also has an app that you can use as well. Now, that's by Vega Touch. If you hit the little cogwheel here, you can come to your settings screen. You have your 24 and 12 hour. We have our auto dimming you can set and push for mobile app. Mobile, the mobile app is Vega Touch. So if you open up the Vega Touch app on your phone, don't mind my broken screen. 
You hit scan, it's gonna come up with this one. As long as these number matches, double press it, it says connecting. Once that's done, you're gonna see authenticate, push numbers there. You're gonna type in the numbers that are here and then hit authenticate. That's gonna load the floor plan. Sometimes these need to update, so you must make sure that you have your phone connected to data um, to allow this system be, to be updated. So this here does also your lights, your temperatures for your thermostat, has your, le has your levels for your uh, fresh tank gray and black and propane, has your water pump switches, has your house and chassis voltages, and your auto gen and gen start and stop uh, pieces here. So if you look at here, we have our house. So on our house screen, that's gonna have our lights here. So you have your master lights, porch lights, and awning. Now, if you push the porch light and hold it, it's gonna do the same as your uh, touchpad did at the side of your entry door. We have our water pump here. So anything that's on is gonna be a blue, a blue light indicating that it's on. This here is just your thermostat, so you can turn it up or down. We have our voltages and our generator start and stop here. So just like outside, this is a push button, so you can start it here. That's gonna start the generator on side of the unit. I'm gonna turn that back off because we're plugged in. You don't wanna have your generator running the whole time while you're plugged in. It's gonna make your transfer switch go crazy. Starting it for a second is not gonna hurt it. I uh, just don't suggest doing it. Down below that, we have our auto gen start. So you press it once to get your warning screen up. Now you wanna make sure you're not inside of a cl closed space like we are, we're in a shop. But to activate it, you're gonna hold and press enable. And then release once it's turned blue. Now it's enabled. So you can set, press this here, that's gonna trigger it. So if we go into a low voltage state, it should start your generator. Uh, we have five tries for it to start until it stops trying to start the generator. And then we also have HVAC uh, load. So if you turn on your air conditioner while unplugged, it's gonna sense that you've turned it on and start the generator and then it will start your air conditioner, allowing your unit to cool down. Um, sometimes I've noticed that some of them kind of hiccup a little bit with that, so kind of use that at your discretion. We have our start voltage at 11.5 volts because with AGS or AGM batteries, their batteries like high voltages, so you go from like 13.5 to 11.5 is the best voltages for it to run, a, run at. <coughs> Then we have our quiet start and stop times. So these are gonna be your times that you set for it to not run. So it's gonna be in between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. And it's gonna be in 15 minute increments of time. So you can set that at a campground you're at. We have our time to stop volts is 20 minutes. <coughs> so it has to be at 14 volts for 20 minutes for the generator to stop. stop. And it has to be at 11.5 volts for 20 seconds until the generator starts. Uh, the maximum generator runtime is 300 minutes, and that's the maximum you can set. And the minimum is 10 minutes. Now, if we go back to home here, uh, I'm going to turn off the AGS since we're plugged in. It's just a push of a button. Then we have a little light bulb. That's going to be your lighting page. It kind of does the same thing that the um, one at the entry door does, except it has all the lights of your unit on this. Yep, that's all the ones I went on. And then we have our little lightning bolt one. That's gonna be your AGS uh, settings page there. And you can see your generator hours. I forgot to talk about that. And then the one with the little thermostat looking one, it's gonna be your climate, which is your thermostat. So we have cool. So that's gonna turn on the AC. Uh, we have a high, low fan and auto. So it's gonna be high until it reaches temperature and then it shuts down to a low setting. Uh, once it's reached its temperature, right now it's above what the temperature is. So we're gonna turn that down. There we are. Let's turn on the air conditioner. And now 
I set it above so it's going to shut off in the moment while it's going to keep it on low. And then once you turn it off, with all, everything being gray except for auto, it'll pull down and then turn all the way off. Then we also have furnace. Now your furnace runs off of propane and 12 volts, so you got to make sure that you have your uh, propane filled and have the disconnect on So use 12 volts to have it run. So this here uses propane in there. Then it's going to come out your vents throughout the unit. Then you can push it to turn it off. Then we have auto, so that sets the temperature, hot or cold wherever you'd like to be at. Now I've touched this way too many times for it to know what's going on. So I have every component running right now. So let me turn all this back off so you can hear me a little bit clearer again. So I'll be right back. Now the one thing you'll notice is that when you are using the application, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that if you hit auto, it's gonna turn green, furnace, heat pump, you can run both of these at the same time, allowing the most consumption to come through. So the heat pump's gonna reverse the air conditioner, bring hot air in, cold air out, and the furnace will turn on. And then I can turn that to low, give us some low fan so it circulates throughout the unit. And then when you turn it off, back to auto. Turn off the fan in a few moments. Like so. Next, we'll go over the rest of the interior and Murphy beds. All right, now behind the driver's door on the driver's side, we have our Murphy bed and dinette set up. So we have our nice cushions if you need some backrest when you're sitting up. In the front, you can bring these up and then have some backrest this way, which is nice. I even suggest having some pillows you can put back here. That gives you a little bit more. Uh, you can also have some storage in both sides. Just pull it all the way forward on each side to make it like so. So it's a little over vertical. And then you can bring it back down with ease. Now to make this whole section a bed, you want to make sure you take whatever you have off the table as long as it's above this backer. So if you have like a small book on there, it's not going to really be affected too much. Remove any cushions or uh, effects off of the seats. We're going to lift up on this here. Now these also function as the lock, excuse me, the lock for the beds. So you want to make sure that you put these back down. The way you put these down is just lift them up and then push these back. And these have magnets, so that stops that from coming down here. So lift that up like so. And we'll notice that you have this black cord. You're gonna grab hold of this cord and pull forward. I kind of give it a hand, give it a little bit of ease, bring it down. And then we have our bed. Now our bed won't collapse back up as there's a lock. You're going to use that same strap that you used to bring it down to unlock it, lift up, to close it. You also want to make sure you leave this strap on when closing so that this bed can stay in place. I'd recommend pulling up your uh, pillows as well uh, before closing this. Now one thing that's pretty cool with this unit is you do have these nice backers in the back here. And if you want to, you can take these off. And they have little snaps. So if you don't want to bring pillows, you can use these as pillows themselves. Now, in the corner where I'm at, there's also a light switch. So when you're laying in bed, you can grab the, the lights and everything straight from bed. I would recommend making these pillows as the snap's a little bit hard to get on in the corner. 
it is possible. Kind of have to pinch the corners to get them off. Now we have our ceiling lights here. We have our overhead accents. We have our galley, our over TV, our porch light, and our master is on and off. Also, and this is illuminated, so you can find it in the dark. We do have our two windows up here. I uh, recommend closing these, but you can open these up. And they're the same as the ones on the opposite side. And then we have our privacy line. So you can see that you can lift this up with ease. Push it all the way up and lock these back down. Now, needs a little bit of a push there. Ah, so on this side, the bag got caught from the bed. So you want to make sure that you don't leave covers on for that reason. There we go. Now the bag for the bed's out of the way. And we're able to close that with ease. I'm kind of glad that happened because if going down the road and I see uh, things kind of happen as I'm the te a technician that also works on these other than demo thing, I can know that there was something caught in there and that could help resolve it so you're not stranded on the road. Now above me, this is a nice uh, line. You also have a bug screen, which you can bring over. And then there's a little lift part to lift this all the way open. Um, you do have different stops you can set it at. Do not drive with this open. Now when you have it closed, just push this hand all the way up until this little button clicks, like so. That indicates that that's all the way closed and locked. Now this does have a foil backer on it, so that's going to reflect any heat from the sun. So if you want to leave this closed, you can. Um, on to the next, next part of this unit. Over on the passenger side, opposite side, um, I have our bag of goodies. So in the bag of goodies, we have our manuals. Inside this here, on the very back, we have the employee from Leisure that has serviced and installed all of your stuff. All the serial numbers, all the manufactured model numbers, all the manufacturers, and uh, who makes the product as well in the back here. Also inside, you'll find all your manuals, manuals and info for the rest of your whole unit. Uh, I suggest reading all of it. All right, so we have a lot of space over top here for storage. Up top here, we have uh, our bed sheet, and we have the surround for the front window. This here just has little tabs that you just go from one corner all the way around back. Uh, it's pretty simple to use. And it has a little cutout for the radio, so you're able to use the radio still uh, while you're inside the unit. Now, all these little latches, you must squeeze on the handles to open them. And actually just kind of squeezing them when you're closing them so you don't rely on this latch and push back the striker. Now, underneath this side of the table here, we have our uh, TV and entertainment center. In the center, there's a little pushback button. Push that back, that releases the latch for travel. So we have our TV, we have a DVD player, we have a little holder here, so if you wanted to, you can put the remotes. So we have our remote here. Right now we're plugged in, so we're able to run that. Now, if for the reason, if you're not plugged in, you can turn on your inverter, it gives you 120, or you can turn on the generator, which gives you 120 and charges your battery where the inverter just uses your battery to uh, make power. So it's not gonna charge and over time, it will die. Only difference is the inverter is quiet where the generator makes some noise. So during the night hours, I'd suggest using 
then rare to run it, where during the day you can run the generator to refill your batteries if you're not plugged into 120 volts. If you're plugged into 120 volts, just use it like a normal house. Um, let's see here, we have our input is on TV. Hit menu. Um, I want to make sure our bunny ears are on. I don't know if it's up here. No, it's not. The, what I am searching for is a booster. Not sure if it's all the way underneath here, which it is. Uh, currently it is on. Underneath in this section here, we have two, four outlets. We have a, uh, HDMI cable, which goes to the TV. We have our satellite and our rooftop satellite connections. We have our antenna booster, which has two buttons on either side. Make sure they're both illuminated green. And next to that, we have the two USBs that we can plug in, which has a black cover on it. Underneath here, we have our JBL uh, sound bar. If we pull this down, we have an ottoman, so we can put our feet up and relax. <coughs> now on the back of it, it has a Velcro back, which you can remove, and then lift up on this here. Close your drawer. Uh, currently we have this down so you don't scratch up your floor before getting it. And now you have an ottoman, so you can put your feet up and relax. Now there's only one of these, so you guys are going to have to share if there's two of you in the unit at the same time. Then to close it, you'll see these bars. You pull the bar forward, and then you can lower the legs. Now there is a certain way to do it. There's a cutout on the one. So you put that one down first, and you put this one down. Once that's done, you put your back on it. Now I just dropped the remote. There is some space underneath the seats you can use. So I'm going to put this on and back. And there's a lot of storage underneath there as well. So now that I want to search for TV, I want to make sure our booster and has the green lights on underneath. We are going to hit menu. We're going to scroll over to channel. Go down. It says air. That's perfect. That's where we want to be. We go hit auto scan. And then click yes. We allow that to do its thing. Next to it's the DVD player. This is the remote you're going to use for that. And on the underneath, this is the remote you're going to use for the JBL. Audio. You push it on once, you have a light bar up top. It's going to indicate the source. Hit TV. That's going to make sure it has a TV input. The other input is uh, Bluetooth, which you can pair with your phone after hitting the Bluetooth. You have an up and down for volume, and we have a mute button so you can mute it. While that's doing its thing, we have a corner cabinet here. This is our pantry. So we have a lock to unlock it. So we have our pantry. We can use this side of the pantry. We have a nice closet so you can store a lot of clothes inside this unit. Some shelves underneath so we can store goods. So it's a closet, not a pantry, but it's multi-purpose. Multi this side we have some more overhead storage. I suggest putting your pots and pans in here as this is hard wood. Up top here, we have the grate for our microwave, which is behind me. This is a uh, convection microwave grill, so you're able to do the same thing inside of it. So just don't use that when you're microwaving. Uh, follow the instructions on how to use that. We have our two burner stove top. So to ignite this, we got to make sure our propane is on, on outside. Turn this to the lightning bolt. Push in and then hit the igniter, hold it for a few seconds until it's on, and you can do the same with the other side. And then let go. Now you have two burners and you're able to use them. Do not turn the burners on with the glass on, 
after having these on for a little while, let these cool down before closing the glass top. Now, when you're cooking, you want some air movement to allow it to take out any type of smoke or uh, gases from using that. So we have our max air vent fan here. So we can turn this to three, and then we can hit this button next to this manual roll up. So you can crank it up manually if you'd like, or you can hit the button. That's gonna lift it up for us. Once it's up enough, it's gonna turn on the fan. If you want just vent, you can turn off the fan. Then the one, two, three is gonna be our fan speed, which we can also turn off the fan by putting that to zero. Now there is a knob here with a thermostat. So if it gets hot, you can change the temperature to turn it on when it gets warm or a cold to turn on when it's cold. Then you can push that. That's gonna retract it. That's a little switch right here, black switch. And then once it's all the way down, it turns off the fan. Like so. All right, so our fan's here. Above me here is our air conditioner. Now, all the way at the floor line, we have our 120 uh, breaker box location. So you're gonna have all your breakers in here for your 120 section. Uh, the next one next to it, pull down tab. This here has all the labels for your 12 volt. So this is all your fuses for your 12 volt system. We have our three drawers, eight drawers all the way down. And we have our silverware drawer inside this drawer. This is our filter. See how it says top here? You want to make sure this is, goes in that yellow location that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Once this little tabs are kind of like in line with the little claw section of that, you just go ahead and close it in. That's going to push this in. This is your drain plug and filter for your water heater. Uh, also, you have some equipment in here. You have some parts for your fridge and for uh, any other accessories inside this unit. And we have a quick connect which is, I forgot to talk about. So close to the end of the video, I'll show you where this is at. Uh, and we have our sink, which is a deep well sink with our cover. So currently it's winterized. So let me stop up some of this water and freeze. Now this will be fully, fully detailed by the time you get it. Um, this here will drip a little bit of water, so I suggest putting a sponge or a paper towel on top of this if we put this down, because water is gonna find its own level. So once it hits the level and you're hitting those corners with the vehicle going around corners, it can force a little bit of water around that. We have paper towel holders and a spice wrap. We have some more switches here. So we have our ceiling lights, our master lights, a water pump switch here as well. Oops. So we can turn our water pump off and on here. And our accents, um, if you wanna walk down this way just a little bit for me. Inside this compartment, we have our trash bin. We have a water pump located on the floor. And we have our bypass valves for our water heater. So right now the unit is currently in bypass so that no antifreeze gets into the Truma system. Um, when you get it, you're gonna want Either this is going to be in bypass and dewinterized by the time you get it, maybe. If not, uh, we'll just have to follow the valves. Now, all these valves do have labels on them, uh, so just using a flashlight and follow the trimmer's instructions for dewinterization. Underneath the microwave, we have our Dometic uh, double sided doors, so you can open and close them from either side. So if you're trying to get a piece of ice cream after a shower or have a cold beer while you're taking a shower, you can open it up towards you there, or you can open it towards you the other way. Now, to turn this unit on, you have a one button switch. Press and hold that down. That's gonna illuminate our screen here. So on the screen, we have our, uh, tells us our temperature for our cooling, tell us auto, right now it's plugged into 110 and the beeping is off. So this has warning indicators that we left this freezer open for too long, indicating that it's gonna start beeping at you to tell you to close your fridge. You just close it like such. Um, to go through your settings, you're gonna press the button. First one's gonna be your temperature, press it again to select how cold or warm you'd like it, press it again to exit. 
Then the next one down is going to be your uh, source. So you can use 12 volt, you can use propane, or you can use 120 to cool this unit. The quickest unit way to chill it is just leave it on auto. So when you're plugged into 110, it's going to cool on uh, 110 volts. Or if you're disconnected from 110, it's automatically going to switch to propane. Obviously, you need the propane switch on and the unit's 12 volt disconnect on, allowing this unit to cool. Now, you must also leave your 12 volt disconnect on to charge batteries and for any other system to work. As the backbone of this refrigerator is 12 volts, even though it uses 120 volts to operate for propane. Uh, that's just going to be what's cooling your unit. Now, with the medic suggests that you leave your fridge on for 48 hours to allow it to properly cool down before unplugging or leaving it. Um, if you're trying, meaning leave for a trip. So you want to plug this in at the house or run the generator. Uh, 48 hours for a generator is a fairly long time to run constantly. Um, so I'd suggest plugging into a 15 amp source at the house. Just run an extension cord out with a 30 amp adapter. That's going to allow you to have your fridge cool down within that two days before leaving on your trip. If you don't have that able to happen, I'll suggest um, turning this on, going down your trip, going down to where you want to take your trip, bring some like beer or whatever uh, liquids you'd like with you. You can put this in the fridge as they're not going to decompose on you. But once you get to the location, that should cool down by then and you're able to store in groceries from the location you are at. Um, so now that I have this on uh, auto, that's what we're going to have it on. And then all the way at the bottom, that's going to be all of our indicators. So we can turn, change our brightness of the screen. We can turn off and on indicators. So I'm going to turn that on for you. We have our recirculation fan. And we have a defroster, so we can defrost the um, freezer once we've used it for a while. And then we have back. Now, when you're defrosting stuff or leaving this for storage, you want to put some paper towels at the base of it and prop these doors open. So you can just leave them open like such when in storage so that some airflow can get in, prevent uh, preventing mold from building up inside. So you want to have that nice and dried and wiped out and leave a paper towel at the base of it to soak up any moisture that's left in the unit when leaving it. Now you can see that I have this system on. You do have light indicators in it. You do have your fresh uh, selector down there. So you can control how much of air flow into the unit right here. So if you have carrots, you want to have as least airflow, or if you have apples, you want a little bit more airflow into that container. And then when you're pressing and opening this, you want to pull this from the center and close it from the center of the handle as well. That helps secure the front and the top and bottom latches all the time. If you pull just from the top, you can run it to an issue down the line that the door may flex or warp preventing the bottom from being closed all the way. Now, all the way after we have our bathroom, we have a bathroom door, which has a stop. Push down on the black stop at the base of it, which is right here. That allows this to slide closed and you do the last one giving you can use some privacy. And that's just a little twist latch here. And if you really need to grab the door, you can grab it like such. Once you're done, push it all the way forward and lift up on that. That gives this door a little bit of a lock. Now, if you really hit some big bumps, this can come closed on you. Um, that's kind of just with the nature of having a mobile house. Things are going to shift a little bit while going down the road. So any rattles, any type of uh, noises, you're going to hear that going down the road because this is a house on wheels. So all the way in the back here, we have our medicine cabinet and some overhead storage. So you can put your uh, towels and linens in here. And you have your locks. So push this one at the bottom. There we go. That one's secure now. We have our ceiling and our water pump in here as well. We have our 
the medical toilet. So to use this, this is a gravity, so you're gonna have to depress this slightly, allow water to come through it, so. Like so. And it's gonna fill up a little bit more when you push it. Um, and then when you're trying to empty it, just push it all the way down. That's gonna have water coming out, help rinse the bowl while dropping it all the way down. Now you're gonna to wanna to use some chemicals in there to help clean it out and keep it nice and sanitary in the toilet. Now, if you need a little extra help to clean out the bowl, you do have a sprayer. So to use the sprayer, you must depress the sprayer handle and press down on the flush valve until water comes out. Now that's gonna be more apparent when you're hooked to city connection or have water in the fresh tank and have it primed and running. Now, there's also a seat cover, so when you're using your shower, you don't have to sit on the toilet lid, you can actually sit on this. Now, I'm 280, and that's fine, and it's holding me just right. Also, on this side, we have our uh, hot and cold for our sink. We have little holders. Now, you're going to think it's a little weird that there's a cup in here. Now, that's going to be the cup to hold your toothbrushes, put your toothpaste and soap in there. Now, if you want to come over up here, we can show you where your shower is. So we have our shower right here. So our shower surround closes like such. Now you're going to want to hold it onto this door while closing it, like so. Shower just like normal, but you have a shower light inside. You have a grab handle so you can have a, a sure step getting in and out. And then we have our bar here so you can hang your dripping, uh, wet clothes and or dripping uh, towel, keeping it all in there. Nice sunlight, so if it's bright out, you'll be able to see the sunlight coming in and not really need to have the bathroom lights on. Uh, to keep moisture and all that down, we have the same Max Air Vent fan that we have in the kitchen. Same procedures, just push the button. That's gonna bring it up. Off and on, same as the one in the kitchen. Uh, in a few moments, we'll go over the rest of the chassis side and just the components underneath the hood. All right, so to rotate this round, first thing you're going to do is bring your seat forward. There is a yellow handle in the front. You spin it around, and the way that you make this handle here come open is just by pulling it outward. Now you cannot drive down the road like this. It actually stops you from taking it apart. So to make sure you're able to go and drive, turn it around until it locks, and then you can make your seat back as well. Now you can do the same for the driver's side. The only difference is that you must deep take down the parking brake by pushing it down like so. Now the parking brake is still on, but you're able to clear it around. So pull it all the way back up, pull it up and push down the button to release the parking brake. Now I gotta go and open up. You wanna make sure that you have whichever uh, chair you are spinning around. You wanna make sure that you have that door open so you can open the driver's seat. Uh, driver's side door. I gotta pull it forward and I gotta turn it and then I can close the door. And that's about as far around as you can make for the driver's door, driver's seat. The passenger seat's the only one that can go 180. So this one can only go 90 degrees. So you can pull that that way and bring it back. So I'm going to go ahead and show you underneath the hood. The hood latch is right here. And that's underneath this cup holder. And then we'll go over the rest of the dash. After I'll show you the components under the hood. So with this one here, we do have the nice halo headlights and the fog lights are put on this model. So underneath the hood, we have our turbocharged motor, eco motor. The hood latch goes there. We have our window washer fluid here, our air box for air intake. This here is our cabin air. That's where all the air is going to go in there. So you want to make sure you get all bugs out so they don't smell bugs on the interior. We have our 5W30 here, and our dipstick is back here. We have our brake fluid, and this is our antifreeze. 
There is a jump cable positive lead here, but I'll check your manual there for where the ground pole is for that. I believe Ford uh, suggests to jump the uh, unit from the battery, which is underneath the driver's side floor. Um, now we'll go back inside and I'll show you everything on the dash. Okay, so we have our steering wheel. Our steering wheel has uh, touched uh, for our volume, so we can mute the the radio, turn up the video volume, or mute it. We have our cruise control area here, our left and right turn signals, a lane departure, and our high beams. So if I just turn it on this way, we have our heads up display controls. So that's going to be for the my view area here. We have our driver assist, we have our navigation, we have our radio or phone, our settings. So if you're selecting things, you hit OK. Well, this one here is showing that you have to hit this here. Then that gives you your uh, selections up and down. And then you can hit select so you can select settings like your lightings, your shines, auto high beams, auto lamp delays, for when you turn it off. And you can pretty much go through here. We have remote start, climate control on, auto, and duration 15 minutes. Change that from 5 to 10. Sorry, 5, 10, and 15. We have our wipers. So we can turn those on with courtesy wipe, uh, rain sensing, and chimes. We have our driver assistance in here, pre-collision assist, lane keeping assist, which alerts, driver alerts, our display, so you can see your languages, miles per gallon, temperatures, tire pressures, and PSI, and we have our information, so we have our auto start stop, and that's going to be the one we drive, and then hit this brake, unit shuts off conserving fuel. And when you release your foot off the brake, it turns the unit back on, so we're ready to go down the road. Now it's almost instantaneously for start and stop. We have our driver alerts and engine hours, or how long it's run and how long it's idled. Um, then our vehicle maintenance, so we can check out our oil life and our tire pressures right here. So you can see 60, 69, and 54. And that's our inner and outer tires as well. So it's all tires. We have our trip log. So we can see our time, miles per gallon. Right now it's only at 4.4 since it's only been idling. Uh, 250 miles to eat empty. It's been 38 miles or miles per hour. We can see our driver assist warnings. We can see our navigation heading west. So if we back up. to the trip. Um, we have our left and right turn signals, our high beams. Our lights are over on the left hand side here. So we have our marker lights, or our headlights, and then we have <coughs> auto. So this will turn on and off with daylight and nighttime and rain. Um, oops. This one here is for put our fog lights on. And we have brightness of our dash. We can lower and brighten our dash. To the left of that is going to be our mirrors. So we can adjust our mirrors. Turn it left and right for left and right. We have our windows. So we can put our windows up and down. Now the driver's side has an auto down. So when you pull up the toll booth, which is almost non existent anymore, everything is pay by plate. We have our door locks on the door itself by the door handle. We have a cup holder there. We have some door pockets and the handle. Another cup holder to the left and right of the dash. And then in the center, we have our uh, gear selector. So to put it in gear, you got to put your parking foot on the brake. And you can put it in drive and reverse. Now, there is a reverse camera. There we go. There's our reverse camera in reverse. 
And I believe, I don't know if this one is equipped. It is not. But you have your mode here. So on the center, you can see drive no mode normal. We have drive mode economy, to save with some fuel, some slippery. So if it's snowy or wet or raining, put on slippery to help. And then we have tow haul as well. So if you're towing something behind you, you can change it to that to help with engine braking. The next little icon right here, this is our traction control. So this turns off and on our traction control, which is indicated on the dash here with the off, with a little squiggly in the car. Push it again and then it will turn on. Uh, on the right side, this is our auto start off and on. To turn it off, uh, the engine will stay running. When you're braked, turn it on, it will turn back on. So it will turn off the coach saving gas when you're at a full stop. I'm just going to turn this off now since we're not going over the engine components. This is our dash radio. So we have our audio here. We can see our sources up in the left hand corner. This is all touchscreen. We have AM, FM, Sirius XM, and Bluetooth audio. We have our phone, so you can add your phone here. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. You have uh, push talk. That's also on here as well. On the steering wheel, ste uh, steering wheel, and you have your accept and decline, and you have your last and next for the radio as well for your sources. Then back to the dash, we have our navigation in the center, so you'll be able to navigate. You can pinch out and move across and around to navigate to try to find that road. We have our apps, so you can add mobile devices. You can find mobile apps. You have your Sirius XM travel link, so you can find fuel prices, music, weather, parking, and all that type of stuff on here through Sirius XM. And the last setting is our settings. So we have our navigation, mobile apps, Bluetooth clock. You can scroll left for more, so you have automatic updates, vehicle display, voice control, valet mode, Ford Pass Connect, which is an app you can download on your phone to help link with your chassis here. We have General, so you can go in there, get your temperatures, touchscreen beeps, and software licenses and a reset. And then we have Home all the way back up here. So this is your normal home screen. You can see your phone would be here, your radio station, and your GPS up on the dash. You also have the old school touch, so if you want to Look, raise and lower your volume. You can turn the head unit off and on for the audio. You have your settings screen here. Bring up settings, your play pause. Next, you have a screen off, so you can turn the screen off to that or all the way off. Push it once more to be back like normal. We have our tune, so you can tune your channels left and right here manually. And this is not a button. The only button up here is this volume off and on. We have our fan control here. So you can set your fan control and you can turn off the whole system right here if you don't want to use it. We have our defrosters front and floor. So if you want the air coming through, we can there. And then you can close off your single vents up top. We have a recirculation and then we have AC and our defroster on the opposite side. Now max defrost, if you take this part here, click it once, that's your max defrost. And max ACs, click it once on the left hand side, that gives you max AC. And then you can turn it off and down, turn it all the way off. Below your climate control, you have your four ways. We have USB here with a 12 volt charge. We also have the same thing on top of the dash of the driver's side as well. And then we have our glove compartment in front of the passenger seat. Our four manuals. And then this here, this is so you can fill your fuel. Now you must have your uh, entry door here open to get to your gas cap, which uh, I'll show you in a minute, but
but everything else on this chassis is up top. So we have push this in the center to all the way to the left. So when you open up the door, the overhead light doesn't come on. Have it in the center section. We'll turn on with the door. Turn it all the way to the right. This stays on the whole time. And then you have your left and right map light as well. Um, you have your mirror, but that's not going to serve us any real purpose. And we have some overhead storage right here. Right over top. I suggest don't put anything that can roll out up top here, as in the event of a hard break, it can roll back and probably hit you in the head. So I would suggest just some light paperwork up top here. Uh, and that will do fine. You do have your curtain airbags all the way through the B pillars and uh, your tweeters in the pillars. Doors have door speakers, and that's all your speakers up front here. Um, yeah, I'll show you where the fuel uh, door is and where to access that, and then that will complete our whole uh, demo for you. Any other type of questions, uh, you can ask your salesman. All right, so here's your driver's door. I'm going to open up your driver's door, open up the gas cap, and uh, you're able to get to it. Now, this doesn't have a regular gas cap. All you have to do is push the nozzle in, and that will allow access to the fuel. So that's the main reason why we had that white piece, is so it holds it open, so you can grab you fill it with a gas tank, gas can. And then once you're done filling it, you just close it up and close the door. This also helps prevent people from trying to suck new gas as well. So that's a big plus there. For an event of your chassis battery dying, you just use your key to lock the doors on this model. And one other thing I forgot to show you, let's go over to the entry door. I'll show you where these two keys go. So here we go. So this big key here, that's going to be for a deadbolt. That's going to go in this one here, turn to the right. That's going to lock it. So, Push it again to unlock it. We can open it up. And then this little round key here, that one's going to be for this here. Push it to the left to lock this little handle. Push it to the right to unlock it. And again, if you have any other questions, you can ask the salesman and we'd be glad to help you. Welcome to Fred's RV Rentals. My name's Pete Cozy and I'm the rental manager. Today, I'd like to do a brief overview of the motorized RVs that we rent here. We have two different classifications. We rent a B Road Trek Play van. It's a brand new 2021. And basically, the length is 21 feet long by 6 feet 2 inches wide. And it is legal in any parking spot. So you can take this anywhere you want, park it. It doesn't have to go where the RVs go. It has the ability to actually sleep two people in the back, and it will open up from a sofa during the day to an actual RV inside bed in the back. It has all the amenities that you need as far as a stove, refrigerator, and a heater, and a microwave, and a cooktop. It's got everything that a traditional RV has, but it's more compact. So uh, basically these, these units rent for $279 per day. You get 100 miles a day free. We have lots of discounts for the first time renters and a really cool try before you buy program. Uh, so uh, if you can, give me a call anytime and I can go over everything over that the unit has. And I want to make sure that you know that we have a 25 foot. This is a traditional C-Class RV. And uh, this unit will actually sleep up to eight people. So there's four areas. We have a cab over which actually opens up to an RV king bed. We have a bed in the back. We do have a sofa and dinette that will break down into a bed area. Now these units, they rent for $289 per day with 100 miles a day free. And uh, we have, again, lots of discounts uh, on excessive miles that you may want to be driving on your trip for all of our motorized units. And we have a try before you buy program. So uh, this is a general idea of what we rent here and the size of the units. Now this unit being 25 feet in length, it is eight feet, five inches wide. 
So it's more of a traditional C-Class RV. So give me a call. My direct phone number is 215-723-3121. And my extension is 106. And uh, my all my information is on our website at fretsrv.com. You'll be able to do a brief overview of these. We also rent travel trailers. So we have three different models. There's some videos on there and a brief overview of those. Thanks for your time. Happy RV, and we'll see you guys soon. Hi, welcome to Fred's RV Rentals. My name's Pete Cozy. I'm the rental manager. Today, I'd like to do a brief overview of some of the travel trailers that we rent here. So uh, in our fleet, we do have 2021 Jayco J-Flight SLXs. That's basically the units that we rent. We have a 17-foot box, sort of like what you see here. We have a 22-foot box, and we have a 26-foot box. The 17-foot box has a queen bed in it. It has a dinette that breaks down for a single person and two bunk beds, so up to five. Same thing with our 22 foot box. We have a queen size bed. We have a dinette that breaks down and a sofa bed that breaks down. Now our bigger unit, our 26 foot Jayco J Flight 264 bunk house, it actually will sleep up to eight people. So it has double wide bunks. It has a dinette and a sofa and a separate bedroom, queen bedroom. So uh, those are the units that we rent. They rent for $179 per night. It's unlimited miles on these units. So uh, there is no charge for miles. And uh, basically, we have a first-time renters program, which is really neat. So what ends up happening is there's a lot of discounts and benefits to the first-time renters that I can go over with you. And we have a really cool try before you buy program where you get a rebate back from your rental if you're going to purchase something. So we have lots of clients that are looking to rent to buy. And uh, we have a great program for you. Uh, you can be, uh, I can be reached at the dealership at 215-723-3121, extension 106. And uh, you can call me anytime and we can go over your trip, get you a quote out, get you all the uh, first-time renters discounts. So thanks for watching. This is a brief overview of our travel trailers. And uh, give me a call and let's get you out there and get your RV in. Nice meeting and have a great day.